the next essay I'll be talking about is hormonal and neural explanations of aggression this is one of my favorite um, essays um, so let's get straight into it um, my first first of all I'll talk about AO1 um, so testosterone is a predominantly male hormone which is also found in women but in low levels and is associated with aggression the amount of testosterone produ produced peaks during puberty um, and is correlated with high risk of aggression from young boys during this time um, testosterone acts on the serotonergic synapse and appears to lower um, lower the amount of the neurotransmitter serotonin a neurological explanation is that low levels of serotonin are associated with um, aggression straight on to the AO2 um, so Edward, Edward um, study, so he injected newborn female mice with testosterone who then demonstrated aggression similar to male mice. This is evidence that testosterone is a biological cause of aggression. Similarly, Connor and Levine found that male rats castrated, which means their testicles were cut off after birth, had reduced aggression um, because testosterone is produced in the testicles of mice um, when tested as adults. Um, and appeared to produce less testosterone. This is a direct evidence supporting the link between testosterone and aggression, as without the excess amounts of the hormone, they appeared less aggressive compared to other male rats that were not ca castrated, supporting testosterone as a mechanism into aggression. We can move on to research flaws. So we are unable to generalize to humans, mainly because the anatomy of humans are a lot more complex than the one of a rat or a mouse um, in this case um, and also humans have morality which is likely to affect their aggression therefore it weakens the study so you could talk about the ethicality and how it is unethical to um, test and um, put animals such as rats and um, mice into such trauma by um, ha having them undergo surgery or even in injecting them with testosterone basically just manipulating them um, which is, does not seem fair and is not ethical you could also go on saying when ethics arise you have to ask the question does the ends justify the means but um, as the evidence is not um, we are not able to transfer and generalise to humans perhaps more human studies need to be carried out I then go on to human research um, and the research is by Kleinsmith who found that men's testosterone levels increased after taking part in an aggressive activity which was assembling a gun compared to a control group where men took part in playing a board game. This is huge support for hormones playing a role in aggression as it seemed that their, their levels of aggression had increased afterwards. However, as um, this was not measured objectively like through a blood test we are unable to assume cause and effect so we don't know whether the uh, aggressive um, activity caused increased levels in aggression or whether the individual had an increased level of aggression before they started the um, activity this arises the issue of cause and effect and as we can't assume cause and effect um, it weakens the study. I then go on to talking about neural explanations. Um, so neural explanations focus on the brain structure and various neurotransmitters such as serotonin when explaining the development of aggression. So here we have a picture of the um, amygdala, the prefrontal lobes and the limbic system. So amygdala is actually part of the limbic system and of the brain and appears to control impulsiveness and regulate self-control. Frontal lobes of the brain are important in restricting aggressive behaviour, so it would suggest that damaging may result in aggression. Moving swiftly on to the first study that we go into is amygdalectomy, which is the removal of the amygdala, um, which seems to reduce aggression in previously violent individuals. This supports it, as um, we said here that the amygdala is associated with controlling aggression. However, it seems that removing the amygdala induces side effects such as loss of emotion. So perhaps the amygdala does not directly cause aggression, but is involved with processing emotions such as anger. Um, so it actually seems more to control aggression um, and regulate it instead of causing aggression. So nonetheless, it is clear the amygdala plays a role in aggression supporting neurological explanations. 
Um, I then go on to talk about Suma, an individual, a, a case study actually, um, a man who had a tumour to his limbic system. His behaviour was characterised by, um, by hyper-aggressive tendencies, but when it was removed, his behaviour returned to normal. This is compelling evidence as it seems that the faulty limbic system and brain structure are directly responsible for aggression. Um, and this is really strong supporting evidence for neuro neural neural mechanisms into aggression. Um, however, case study issue, we cannot generalise to the wider population as um, it only it may have only affected him. Other people with a um, faulty limbic system or a tumour may not have the same aggressive, hyper-aggressive tendencies, so we can study. Then, look at Justin Bieber here, are we talking about brain scans and convicted criminals? Convicted criminals showed abnormalities within the limbic system. Such individuals have lower levels of self-control and are more likely to be impulsive, suggesting that these brain differences um, may explain their aggressive convictions, supporting neurological explanation into aggression, as um, they have abnormalities in their limbic system. Finally, yeah, finally, we talk about Phineas Gage, I love this um, research, where a man, it was back in the Victorian days, um, where when he was working on, on a train track and they used gunpowder to like drill in um, iron rods into the um, train tracks and he managed to somehow do this wrong. I don't blame him because the technology back then was shit. Uh, so an iron rod actually propelled through the through his skull, as you can see in this picture, um, and his skull um, through his skull, damaging his frontal lobes. And as we said in the beginning, frontal lobes seem to control aggression, um, regulate it as well. Once a calm, self-controlled man became impatient, impulsive, and showed heightened levels of aggression, this shows that damage to frontal lobes may have severe aggressive side effects which supports neurological explanations. Again, we can talk about case study issues as a one, one individ, individual um, and perhaps the severe situation, which is unlikely to happen today, was bound to have psychological repercussions. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your exam.